Hello and welcome back to another episode of the awesome, the great, the most fun podcast ever. No Tux allowed. And that doesn't necessarily mean no <laughs> Linux allowed. It's a misnomer. And don't call it NTA. Don't search for NTA because there's a lot of podcasts out there called NTA. It's no Tux allowed on YouTube or on your podcasting application, wherever. The links, of course, will be in the links uh, in the description below. Or now it's right here because of YouTube's decision to push suggested videos to everyone at the bottom of every video. But as usual, with me is the great, the most enjoyable Josh, who is still continuing the hate on Arch Linux. But the you know that's just a fa- pastime with uh, whenever I hang out with Steve these days. <laughs> yeah, really. Uh, and the most unfun loving Big Pot. Debatable. <laughs> hey, you guys, how you been? How you been? Uh, I Wait. have been perfectly fine. Uh, you know, I, I, insta- I installed this thing called uh, Fedora. And uh, we we're messing around with like the atomic desktops, and uh, we're we've been running into headaches constantly, left and right. But uh, that's what I normally do anyway. So says the guy who hates Arch Linux, and I've been so happy on Arch Linux for the past fifteen days. I mean, let me know when Pac-Man finally works. <laughs> <laughs> when that will be a real package manager, let me know. Mm the same thing over and over again and big pod so what you been doing well i've been playing games because i have nothing else to do (laughs) besides i've been playing games too but which brings but brings us to our uh first topic games yeah games yeah so what games have you been playing uh, currently, I'm mostly playing Helldivers 2. Yeah, I never understood that game. You just land in the middle of... Uh, you go from a- a alien-infested place to alien-infested place. Yes. You shoot, shoot, shoot. And he who gets the best kill, the most kills, is the best. Not really. That's what I understood from it, from the it's a, videos. It's a co-op shooter. It's You're trying to work with your team to... F- finish objectives. And objectives? Like, yes. uh, you have an objective to kill X amount of aliens? No. There is one mission where you have to kill X amount of aliens. But most objectives are you have to either launch an ICBM. So before you can launch an ICBM, you need to power the generator, find the launch codes, and pump the fuel into the ICBM. Before you can then go and launch the ICBM by entering the codes and setting the target location and launching it. And of course, defending the sites from the aliens. And do the Xbox style up, down, left, right, left, yes. left, up, down, left, right. Yes. <laughs> Yay for the optimization to for our friends who use console and controllers. Yeah. And how uh, did uh, were you playing it on Linux or on Windows? Both. And how does it run on Windows? On Windows, it runs great. Uh, on Linux, I mean. On yeah, Linux, what the hell? on Linux, great. Like optimized? No, no bad. Works stuff pretty well for me. Okay, uh, and I've been playing games as well, uh, except I am a little bit. This time I'll be the weird one. This time around I'll be the weird one. I've been enjoying some nostalgia. Some nostalgia. I I don't enjoy modern games. Modern games are story wise, they're they're not unique anymore. Some of them are. Were games ever all that unique? Yeah, in the olden days, yes. No. Uh, well, I'm playing. Uh, I'm currently enjoying Need for Speed Porsche Unleashed or for the European people, Porsche 2000. Uh, I don't know, different markets, different names. I don't understand that. But uh, I'm playing that. I'm playing Quake 3 Arena and Team Arena. Some Unreal 2K4. 
I'm playing, uh, I'm enjoying some uh, Moto Racer, and to top it, to, to top it all off, one of my favorite games of all time, the game that started the whole, I think, in my opinion, it started the whole GTA ideology or uh, uh, style of games, Midtown Madness. Those are all games from the 90s, if not previous. Didn't Grand Theft Auto come out in like the 90s too? I, I remember well, yeah. being like an NES title. The, well, Grand Theft Auto, yeah, it was at the same time almost. Yeah. Uh, but Grand Theft Auto, when it came out, it was top-down view. Yeah. So, but Midtown Madness was you drive around uh, San Fran uh, and you just hit everything and you got the cops running after you and also i'm enjoying driver the first one uh, all that on windows 2000 in a vmware in a uh, in a vm a uh, fun hmm. fact midtown madness 2 is younger than gta 1 yeah but G i'm talking about the other gta's the uh and sure later you... came came a more more normal looking gta not the top down, yeah, but GTA 3. I think it started with GTA 3. Uh, I believe but... the GTA 2 was. The GTA 2 was also top down. It was London. Yeah, it was. Or something. Yeah. But the I'm enjoying all these games on Windows 2000 in a VM. Let that sink in. And they're all running at over 100 frames per second. <laughs> well, minus uh, Unreal yeah. Tournament 2K4. Yeah. Those games could run on a, on basically anything these days. So it's not a VM, of course. Yeah. Honestly, I wonder if it might even work better on running in Wine rather than a virtual machine. I tried them on Wine. Not really, because specifically that uh, the way the game those games were written, uh, GOG re, uh, reprogrammed the executables. I don't know how, what black magic they did. They do. If you get them as GOG, if you purchase them from GOG, they would work on Linux, no problem. But if you have the original uh, discs that, uh, that you install from, they're classic games and they're awesome. When you have images, uh, the original disc images, they were not optimized like GOG did uh, to them. So uh, they don't run... Uh, Linux doesn't... Wine doesn't know what to do with them, basically. Yeah, and that's probably because uh, Wine doesn't actually support the whole 100% of Linux... I mean, Windows kernel calls. Exactly. And another thing, when you have the original disks or the disk images, so most of these games in the olden days, they used to come with music tracks on the disc so when you, when you play a game and you listen and you hear music in the background some of them uh, come uh, uh, some of that music comes from the not digital track but actual cd audio track if, if you put in the disc in a stereo in a cd player you could you skip track one which is data you go to track two and three and four those are all music tracks yeah. What, uh, the way uh, GOG bypasses that is they rip that music and they give it to you as separate soundtrack. They they give it to you as a soundtrack, not in-game music. You lose the in-game music. This is why okay. I don't like uh, GOG games, for uh, G classic GOG games as much, because I lose a lot, especially in old talkie games. If any, no one knows. If you none, uh, if you listeners, some of you don't know what talkie means. It's I'm going to give you an example. Sam and Mac hit the road. The characters actually spoke, but in the ripped version by GOG, you don't get the talkie. You just get the text at the bottom of the screen, by subtitles, but you don't get the the vocal. So also if you get it on steam because it's available on steam also no vocal so if you have the original discs then you get that you don't lose it and you don't lose the uh, audio tracks so linux doesn't know how to deal with all that wine doesn't know how to deal with all that so it's not a great experience that's why i opted to install windows 2000 in a vm 
and install them that way. And side note, Windows 2000 was never made to play games on, so it also doesn't contain, because it's using an NT kernel, it doesn't, uh, there's a lot of calls that are not implemented, so not all games will work on Windows 2000. Have you considered uh, using Windows Millennium Edition rather than 2000? No. <laughs> or, or a slightly older 98? I was going to use uh, Windows 98, but well, 98... we all know that 98 is not very stable. Then it well, 95. 90... 98 and 95 still use a DOS space, but I believe yeah. Windows 2000 and Windows Millennium Edition both use an NT kernel. And to my understanding, Windows Millennial Edition uh, has all the end for, for gaming back, and everything. Uh, back in the, back in the day, at least Windows Millennium Edition was regarded as like the better option of the two because you know it actually had support. I could I could have gone Windows XP. You could have, but and I chose Windows 2000 been. because it's the only disc. Uh, it's the only OS that I actually had uh, a license for from my old job as a sysadmin. They gave me a license for Windows 2000, professional, I'm not talking server. Uh, I had a legit license. I still have my key, but unfortunately, <laughs> some games give me the kernel, uh, s system call in kernel 32, not found. Error. So basically, <laughs> because it's an NT kernel, uh, not doesn't support gaming, but otherwise, get so much fun on the, playing these games, going back uh, and enjoying uh, the classics, because I find them better than modern games. Oh, I I, I hand find modern games better than old games. You are a youngin. You are a youngin. I mean, can I can I <laughs> can I split the difference a little bit because you know uh, I've been playing a game lately and it's not necessarily a brand new game. It is a modern game, but it's not brand new. Uh, it's also not exactly an old game either, uh, because I've been playing Monster Hunter again, specifically Monster Hunter World. Monster. And the reason why I say that is because it released 2018, and honestly, the game still looks a lot better than a lot of the newer games that I've played. <laughs> <laughs> well, the oldest game I play, and this is a bit of unfair statement, since it's been updated for ever since it came out, is World of Warcraft. I mean, if if we want to talk about like the oldest game, uh, I also play a little bit of Magic the Gathering Arena, which is based off of a card game that was produced back in the 80s. Ooh. <laughs> It's not lighted. The video game version, still relatively new, but you know the card game that's based off of, pretty old at this point. Wait, uh, Monster Hunter. I heard of the game, but I never. Played uh, Monster it. Hunter is a franchise, and it is, and to to basically explain it to everybody in the world, uh, you you are a monster hunter in the most literal sense and most unapologetic. And it is very unapologetically exactly how it sounds. You're a guy, you get tasked with killing a monster, you go kill the monster, you win. That is entirely it. Wait, it was released in 2000? Uh, I, you wanna, the one that I'm talking about is Monster Hunter World. You're looking at the original Monster Hunter game. Ah, okay. Because yeah. it looks like a <laughs> very old world. Okay. Monster Hunter World. Uh, okay. Not bad. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it, 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 it looks. Is, yeah, it looks a little bit like Pokemonish. Yeah, it it's uh it sort of is, but there's no catching monsters. But okay. yeah, you just go in, you kill the monster, and uh, there, there's like time trials for like killing a monster as quickly as possible or as slowly as possible. And of course, there's a crafting system so you can farm the monster for materials and up and uh, create upgraded equipment. It is it is a gr very grindy game when it reaches that point, <coughs> but it does have like a campaign mode with a very simplistic story. I like Which, the graphics uh, though. Yes, it is very beautiful. It is like my standard of what like a triple A game should look like today, and it performs as well as I think a triple A game should perform today. It looks optimized. Yeah, 
Well, when it, when you go to how a triple A game should look, it's gonna be year still, but when GTA comes out, that's gonna GTA Six comes out, that's gonna be a a leap in looks. <laughs> well, of course it is, and you know what? Yeah, I'm people... fine with I'm fine with like the triple A video games like pushing uh pushing the industry forward. Mm-hmm. But you know uh. I at least want the games to be able to work because, you know, I, I've seen what happened with Cyberpunk. I've <laughs> seen what happened with, like, uh, what was that? There was a Harry Potter game that had, like, some issues, uh, too. Yeah. Yeah. And then there was a Star Wars game that had some issues. Yeah. Uh, and then, uh, but in general, just, like, I wish that the, these game developers put a little bit more effort into, like, the PC port itself. <laughs> yeah. Or stop porting games from consoles and create unique uh, well, games for PC. That's well, a bit of an awkward thing because the Microsoft yeah. Xbox is effectively just a Windows computer. Not really, but okay. I mean, not really, but mostly. You can't. You can't just like throw some like you can on a normal computer because you have to use their their development kit and so on. It's a bit more complex. Yeah, than that. but you're you're still you're still hooking like Windows Win. Uh, Windows uh, 10, Windows 11 driver calls, uh, still still hooking uh, NT kernel calls because it's still using the same the same AMD G- GPU driver stack and uh, the same Windows NT kernel uh, on the Xbox uh, as it is Microsoft Windows. I presume uh, at least. I'm not sure it is. Now, and besides, oh, there is a whole lot of difference there because you have a, yeah a, some some sort of a micro kernel there and you have a. Uh, you have like a VM stack that is not Hyper V, and it's a lot more complex than what Windows gaming is. Oh, okay. I I I was just going off of like a very top level speculation there. So uh, yeah, y- you might be right. I I don't know because you know I just don't care. Uh, because I know when that, I when uh, I play on consoles, I play on Nintendo consoles. Not that Nintendo is a great company and all, but because you know when I buy the physical game, the physical game is actually on the thing that I buy. I know that on <laughs> on the Xbox, every game runs in a VM. That much I know. Hmm. Well, uh, in a, uh, VMs are getting much, much better. And I'm not talking about K- <laughs> K- K- uh, KVM or QMU because Windows on QMU is a nightmare uh, and a half to deal with unless you do the, the whole GPU pass-through thing. But uh, I have an old license, a very old license uh, that works for all versions of VMware because, hey, there are benefits uh, that come uh, after working as a sysadmin. Uh, I, I use VMware and VMware, uh, Windows guests on VMware are amazingly, uh, the performance is amazing. So... I use whatever Windows I can in VMware, but for classic games like that, it works just fine. If you start putting games, 3D games, like full-on modern games, like Monster Hunter World and stuff, they're just not going to work. They're going to be very slow, of course, because it's... Yeah, but, it's, you know, there is no Monster Hunter World works perfectly fine with Proton. Yeah, so that's why I, I was very selective uh, on which games I wanted to put on, on that VM. And I do enjoy older games much better than newer ones. Uh, older games are just fun. Like in Porsche Unleashed, there's n- there's no such thing as I need to win. Uh, I need to. Uh, I have a uh, well, reputation or a ladder to climb and stuff like that. No. Oh, it's... so you just don't like the unshootification things? Okay. Yeah. I mean, that there I you can... go. That that I can agree with, and if you want to play like a game that very released very recently with a lot of that, without a lot of that stuff, but still a little, just a tad bit, Baldur's Gate Three. Yeah. Uh. Well, <laughs> I have my own cat, uh, my own issues with Baldur's Gate Three. So yeah, but basically, games, games is uh, are so much fun, is to me especially the old ones, because there's no missions there's no all it's not the uh, they haven't been in shitified so ah, fun for me mm. i'm just a lax gamer i don't i don't care about missions i don't care about all this open world or multiplayer or any of that 
I uh, recently I have uh, modern games. Speaking of modern games, the, the modern game I've been playing for a long time now is uh, called The Gunk, where you just go around a planet, you have a suction thing on your arm. It's like a uh, vacuum cleaner, but it, it sucks all the gunk. You clean up the planet by sucking all the gunk. That's it. And you solve puzzles on the way. Lacks game. On the other hand, I don't like games where it's like so open ended. You need I need to have some sort of missions. Ah, uh, yes. Sort of uh, story the, based games. Game. Story based uh, games. The, the the open world trap. Uh, this is why I don't play the Ubisoft games because there is no guidance. They just drop you into a world after like eight the most brief of tutorials and just tell you to go to town. The the least and people and people wonder to this day why I still have not completed Skyrim. <laughs> Fallout, the least Fallout 76. <laughs> with that kind of game is when you when you have like a strategy game. Strategy game is like a handle without having any kind of like missions, stuff like that. To me, that makes no sense, having missions in strategy yeah. games. But any other kind of game, you need to have some sort of missions, some sort of things to, you know what to do. You, you like Final Fantasy? I don't play Final Fantasy. Uh... Never played it. I played Final Fantasy VII, finished it ori- on the original PlayStation, loved it. Cloud, Tifa, uh, Sephiroth, loved that game. Yeah. I never, and that, never that's owned a, great a game. single it, console. So, in my opinion, I think Final Fantasy does like the open world thing sort of the best. Where, like, a lot... There are some Final Fantasy games where it's just like it's open world from from start to the end. Uh, then there's other Final Fantasy games that are also very linear. But like for for the sake of like Final Fantasy VII, you're it literally was ta- yeah, it 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 is linear. But it, you can also count open world in it too because you know you have the world map that you can go around. But they tell you where to go. Yeah. <laughs> That's the important part. They tell you where to go. <laughs> yeah, of course, and uh, I and I am a, a very big defender of the old combat system, not the new one where you run and hit and run and hit. I like to, uh, I like to hear this music when I encounter uh, the enemy and turn based. Remember that the yeah. old the uh, combat system. Yep, I, I know exactly pre- what you're talking about. Yeah, I, I still prefer that one to the new one. I wish Final Fantasy X for Windows, <laughs> uh, or uh, they kept Final Fantasy at that st- uh, seven remake at that style, but they took Final Fantasy seven, they killed it, and they said, "Hey, there you go, it runs on Windows. It's a remake. It's better graphics." No, put back the the good old combat system. Yeah, I want it back. And, uh... Honestly, they they always like to tinker around with uh th- things on Final Fantasy. Like no two, it's not necessarily a series that you have to play in like sequence or at all or anything. They just put numbers on there just uh because they don't want to give them like special names or anything like that. But like uh, I know that Final Fantasy was it ten or no was it eight? You had one where you could actively switch characters in and out of battle that I found a lot of fun in. And uh, it was. It- Ten yeah, two, it was I ten. Think. It was ten, ten and ten two. Yeah, it was ten, and then ten two had a similar system, but it was a bit more gimped. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I really enjoyed the combat system in Final Fantasy ten. Uh, uh, and then I, I played a little bit of twelve, which, yeah, it was Man. all right. It it was functional. And uh, my current Final Fantasy playthrough, I'm just barely getting started in Final Fantasy 13. Uh, which, if you if you look at like the Steam page on it, people are just constantly complaining about how linear the game is. I think that's I think that's fine. Uh, I I I'm currently on and off playing yeah. a Final Fantasy Reunion, Seven Reunion. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's a pre. It's a, it's like a prequel. To Final Fantasy 7. So I'm enjoying it. It's fun because it's more sar- there's m- more sarcasm in it. Yeah, uh Big Pod do, do you have like a massive franchise that you really enjoy playing? 
Mass franchise, yeah, Call of Duty. <laughs> oh. That's really... If I have to choose a franchise, it's probably Call mm. of Duty. Mm. Uh, and you, uh, Josh, you have a massive franchise other than Monster Hunter. <laughs> uh, so, I'm a really, really big player of uh, Star Wars games. Uh, specifically the KOTOR games. Uh, KOTOR. Uh, Knights of the Old Republic 1 and 2. Yeah, my uh, favorites. Yeah, uh, they are definitely my favorite, two of my favorite games of all time. I, I actually much prefer uh, Knights of the Old Republic 1 to 2. Yeah, the two, they uh, yeah. they added way too much to it. And... Uh, I mean, they added a lot to to 2. But I honestly just like, the, I, I like the story a little bit better in Knights of the Old Republic 1. It was a, a little bit too hurried in the second one. It, there's... Well, yeah, and uh, there, there's a mod you can install that like really expands like the story and everything for Knights of the Old, Old Republic 2. And it they've done a great... Because uh, they there's a lot of content that's just not turned on in the game, and this mod just turns it on. It's just that... Oh, really? Uh, what's it, what's yeah. it called? It's called the Restored... It's called the Restored Content mod. Okay, I'll check that out because I yeah. just got the entire uh, collection of Star Wars and I want to slowly go through them. Yeah, and uh, that's a mod you can install on the game and it turns on all the all the uh, disabled content and it adds a lot to the game. And Ooh. the game is better as a result of it. Because and in the two, at... you get to go to Kashyyyk. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, you actually get to do things at Kashyyyk now. <laughs> yeah, because but, uh... <laughs> before it was too short. Of course, uh, they there's been some community additions to that mod as well because you know uh, this is content disabled for a reason, and that's just because they didn't have enough time to actually finish it. <laughs> so okay. uh, there's been some stuff that's been added onto it. So you might see you might run into things like uh, missing uh, s- missing lines or like characters don't act. There's no like voice acting for our line. Yeah, definitely because they're not gonna yeah. hire the actors again to. Yeah, they're to not gonna hire the actors again or. <laughs> And, and such but uh it does add a lot of depth to that game but i just like uh knights of the republic one because you know i'm not going through these games because you know i want to experience the full depth of the story because you know when i'm going back to a game for like a nostalgia run i just want to run through the campaign and just be done with it if i spend a, if i spend a week playing the game that's fine uh my big thing is I don't want to play a video game where I have to, where it basically feels like a full time job to be playing that yeah, game. Yeah, same and here. Yes, same here. yes. I know. Earlier, I mentioned I was playing Monster Hunter. Monster Hunter, I literally log in, I kill a monster, and then I log out of the game for the day. <laughs> yeah. So I, I play Monster Hunter wrong, just to let everybody know. Uh, yeah, so, but <clears throat> speaking of Star Wars, uh, I uh, replayed uh, uh, the. <laughs> What's it called? Uh, the Sith Unleashed the Lord... What? Star Wars Sith Lords? Something like that? Uh, Isn't that just Knights of the Old Republic 2? No, no. Uh, it Star Wars Sith Lords or whatever. Uh, Star Wars... I, I forgot the name of it. It's on the tip of my tongue, but I completely forgot the, the name of it. Uh, Forces Unleashed. Forces Unleashed. Okay, uh, I have edition. not played any of the Unleashed games. Yeah, so. amazing, amazing. Uh, the, uh, the the fact that you can you are playing a guy whose path is going down. Uh, uh, it's like he you start in on the dark side and slowly get to the light side. And I like those kind of games where you start yeah uh, uh, on the dark side, not. You are a Jedi, and you need to kill the the Sith and whatever. I like that because it 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 shows you another side of of, of the bad guy. So I mean, I mean, I enjoyed that game. I replayed it. I played it maybe seven or eight times, and it has a somewhat of an open world esque essence to it. Yeah. So. But not too big. They kept it. Uh, they kept it very controlled. I, I I like those kind of open world games, but yeah. the massive open world games those are a no no for me. 
you it's you waste too much oh, time. Oh come man. on! World of Warcraft is a perfectly fine game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, that's a multiplayer. That's a multiplayer game. I don't touch multiplayer games. I don't touch multiplayer games. It's single player games. Hey, that, about. That, that's fine. That's fine. Okay, so uh, Big Pod, uh, I know you I, mentioned that you play Call of Duty, and I know yeah. we touched very lightly on it. But my question is: Is it just Call of Duty multiplayer? No, I actually. Yeah, there's a single player for single Call of player. Duty. Yeah. People oh. play the campaign. Yes, I actually, <laughs> actually think it's for for most part fairly well written story. Really? Yeah. I, I never thought it would uh, or something like. Is it is it uh, monster related or is it uh, American versus the Middle East? It's uh, it's warfare. It's American British Army versus the enemy of the game, which. Which uh, in the modern sometimes games it's terrorists, to... sometimes it's Russians, or no, they... Command and Conquer is typically like yeah. Americans versus Russians, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah so uh... oh. nowadays they go more more politically correct, and then either don't mention the country or have a country that is yeah. They just call fake. them terrorists. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, or have a fake organization behind them. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> That's why I don't like Call of Duty. It's because it's always terrorism and it's always... Uh, I'm like, yeah, uh, make it more Doom-like. <laughs> well, <clears throat> you need to have some sort of an enemy. And it's not... I, I would it's, hate for okay. it to be monster, soldiers I mean, versus monsters. That well, makes sense for modern warfare. It, yeah. It's a game inspired by the U.S. Army... <laughs> It's developed by an American game studio, and yes. what has America been doing for the past thirty years? Yeah, and yeah, that that's why it's like that. So it's a military shooter. It. That said, I don't, I, I can, I can completely understand your your reasoning though, Steve. So no, yeah, you don't because I'm on the other me. end. <laughs> yeah, I'm on the receiving end. <laughs> yeah, I don't. In fact, I don't even know how popular Call of Duty is in your area. <laughs> Any FPS game, basically, people play. Here in Lebanon, okay. World of Warcraft is not a big thing. If it is, it's the other version that we shall not talk about. Uh, yeah, uh, potentially not the uh, not the Blizzard servers. Yeah, not the Blizzard servers. Basically, yep. yes. <laughs> uh, so uh, it's more like FPS. It's like Counter Strike is the number one. Counter Strike 2.0 is well, yeah, it, it's free like to play. It. It's in everybody's Steam library because you know Valve yeah. is awesome. So, well, yeah. not the one that's popular is not the one you think. It's not Counter Strike 2.0. It's Counter Strike Beta 7.1. Oh, okay. Oh, very very simply because for whatever reason here in Lebanon they prefer the. Because in beta 7.1, the uh, sniper crosshairs was big and orange. That's oh, so you old, can actually see it. So you can old, actually see old it. Old game, yeah. So they prefer that one, and they still play it to this day. And the modding was way much bigger back in the CS 1.6 and the beta 7.1 days. Custom map and all that all that stuff so we have lebanese we have beirut we have a beirut map it's called cs beirut yeah and uh, is it and is it actually like somewhat accurate yeah but okay. to the old beirut not to the new beirut somebody yeah. created the old war ridden beirut version of beirut to play the game in counter strike i to play counter strike counter strike 2 the new one the the two I yeah, play, I so. haven't been able to download it because I had more urgent games to download than uh, it's been. It's been stuck at downloading in my Steam library forever now. But I've, I've been introduced to Counter Strike Global Offensive by yeah, that's, by that, uh, Tyler. Uh, you you might know him as Zany, uh, and uh, you know, I'm not a big fan of games without stories. <laughs> yeah, that that's the annoying part about Counter Strike. There's no story. But... Oh yeah, no, 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 no. I play uh, games without stories, like Quake Three and Quake Three Arena, Team Arena, and yeah, uh, I mean, okay. no story, but okay. it's fun, still fun. Now, it, it, 
I, it is fun, yes. Yeah, it's fun. But, but uh, if I'm going to be playing, better. if I'm going to be playing a game like, if I'm going to play a game like Counter Strike uh, Global Offensive, I'd rather just play Quake. Yeah, because I agree. You know, Counter Strike Global Offensive just call just brings back like those old memories of me just playing Quake three, Quake three at the land party with the boys. Yeah. And, and you know, That's I just so want to play like a true and proper arena shooter, and not just a uh, Counter Strike. Oh, I remember the Quake Three, uh, Quake Three team arena capture the flag I, days. I remember when the Quake box was a cool system to be buying. <laughs> it, well, and it was just it was just a little tiny. It was an ITX computer before ITX was actually like a thing, yeah. and it had a handle so you could carry it. <laughs> well, but let's continue. Uh, we learned that I am very terminally online, but are yeah. there any other things online that you you two cannot live without? Yes, I'll let Josh begin. Okay, so for clarity reasons, uh, I live in Farmlands America uh, in the central of Ohio. Uh, I live in a town of less than seven hundred permanent residents, and the next nearest town is at least a. 30 to 40 minute drive away. The nearest big box store to me is an hour away. We're talking about like Walmart, Target, uh, Best Buy, and all that. So, unfortunately, when, you know, I want to buy something and it's not available at like my local hardware store, gift store, or grocery store, I have to make two choices. Either I drive a really long distance to go to a store and see if they have the product in stock the hard way, or I just go to Amazon and buy it. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, I do spend money on Amazon every now and then, and uh, I do find like it being a somewhat critical resource for me to have that. And when I talk about Amazon, I'm not talking about just like Amazon.com. I'm talking about like other retail websites too. Like, uh, you know, I've bought stuff off of Walmart.com or uh, some uh, insert other vendor like Newegg for like computer hardware or, and, and so on. So on, online retail is something that I actually do somewhat need in my life. If, you know, I want to do something other than, you know, buy groceries or occasionally buy a pack of nails or a new a new hammer because I broke my hammer or something. Huh. Well and for, uh you know well for me I I'm actually not that dependent on online as people would think. I what I what I really use online is so, streaming services, whether it be music or movies, and YouTube, again, a streaming service. That, that's what I really, really would miss if internet went down for me. The other thing I would miss is uh, that all the services that I host for myself. Of course, I could move them to a local network, but the simple reason they are, they are on remote servers because some of them are connected directly to internet and well there is a much better hardware in the cloud than i have on my disposal right here yeah that's and uh that, you know uh that's fair because you know sometimes sometimes it's just easier to spin things up on a vps you know yeah i rather than I tend you know having to, to deal with like a do <laughs> domain redirection or anything like yeah. that I tend to deal with things like I like to move things as far away from my computer as possible. If the computer can go away from my computer, I'm the, I'm very happy. For so me, what, what about you, Steve? For me, there's only one thing r right now I cannot live without. It's online message. So uh, I am very active on social media and when i say social media i'm not talking about x or twitter or whatever you want to call it it's not x it's twitter it's just just call it twitter everybody knows what you're talking about <laughs> yeah so basically i don't mean twitter or mastodon or any of that just chatting 
I like to chat with my boys. I like to be, uh, I'm a very talkative person, uh, if you haven't noticed yet. <laughs> uh, but I like to chat, and I'm a t the type of person who feels wrong if I don't reply immediately. If I receive a message, I immediately reply. I don't care. Even if sometimes people message me when I'm snoring in bed. Like, it's 5 a.m., I'm snoring, I'm in the middle of a dream. When I hear my phone go, bzz, I look at my phone, I answer. I don't I don't care. I don't tell that person I'm sleeping, stop bothering me. No, I answer. And if it, if it starts a, dis a whole discussion, I don't care. <laughs> so, I am a very social per person to the point that I prefer chat <clears throat> to Twitter or Mastodon because those types of things, you send a message it's in the ether. It's not instant replies, but when you are on Discord, you are on uh, messaging messaging apps. Uh, it's more instant. It's more live. It uh, so, and if you haven't noticed, I like sometimes inject myself on other people's podcasts and stuff like that because I like to pass messages along and stuff like that. So those kind of things I cannot live without. Okay, so uh, I was uh, browsing uh, Reddit uh, this morning, yesterday. I, I was up way too late last night. Uh, <laughs> anyways, uh, I, I ran into this art, this post, uh, specifically titled, Linux is more noob-friendly than Windows. And hmm. I had this thought in my head, just like, you know, that's technically not untrue these days so I, I click it and i get reading this here and of course uh this guy is just talking about how uh first of all he he says that he doesn't know where else to complain about windows and he's he apologizes for his bad english okay you know of course not everybody speaks the one true language of the internet <laughs> uh anyways he touches on how linux is seemingly very complicated and not very user friendly at all because you know you have this thing called a terminal which you know if you're on a Ubuntu based distro you just hit control alt t and that opens up a terminal and then you're just like how do i use this thing well uh and you know windows has a command prompt that you'll basically never have to use ever and that's a good position to have and it it got me to thinking yeah yeah and it it led me to like thinking here the Linux desktop in particular has improved by leaps and bounds. And Microsoft at this point is... Uh, when they're making the transition from like uh, Windows uh, 7 to 8 to 10 and now to 11, they're trying to get rid of like the legacy cruft of like uh, some, of their, some of their legacy application systems, you know, like the control panel and so on. And integrate it into a new system settings menu, mm -hmm. of which I'm sit. I have very light experience with Windows 11. Uh, you know, be just just light. So I might be wrong on this. And Big Pod, you might need to correct me because I know that uh, you you have Windows installation <laughs> on a modern Windows installation on a computer somewhere in your life right now. Yes. But I I remember like being very disappointed in like the settings menu. And uh, having to then figure out how to navigate control panel to be able to like fix like a network option because it yeah. didn't because Microsoft did not expose it in like their Wi-Fi menu selection. Yeah. Even though I was working on a wired uh, system, and then uh, this commenter posts about how he he's kind of fearful about plugging in second monitor uh, to to a Windows computer. And he's saying that it's because you know it's older hardware and drivers not being very well supported. That that's completely fair. But uh, um, something that I've discovered is that specific. Hang on. I have let, let that me continue statement. talking here. Yeah. Now, in my personal experience, I've actually found that uh, Linux running on Wayland supports hot plugging monitors leaps and bounds better than Windows. Mm-hmm. About the same. Actually, oh, I would say it's worse on Linux. 
as someone who, yeah. who does that way too often i have i have to monitor that i that one of them gets shared between a laptop and a desktop i can tell you that it is in some ways better because unlike wayland at least in my experience windows actually remembers where my windows were on that monitor well i'm not necessarily concerned concerned about like wh where the windows are supposed to spawn or where they were what i care about is you know plug it in and screen turns on and it works on like an extended display or a mirror display depending on how i set it last you, that, or like how i have it configured to do that all works really well on windows it it hasn't worked for me and Strange. uh you know every single windows install typically lasts like uh seven and a half minutes for me so uh they just don't last very long uh, so I'm sure that, you know, I'm probably doing something wrong. But I, I know that on Microsoft Windows, you can hit the wonderful command of uh, Super or Windows key and P to be able to pull up like um, uh, external monitor settings or extra monitor settings. And you can then extend or mirror mirror yes. displays and so on like that, which is typically something that I would have to manually invoke. And sometimes like the HDMI handshake on on the screen just doesn't seem to agree with the system. And then... That leads down a whole rabbit hole and a half. Uh, which, you know, HDMI. It... That's an HDMI problem. <laughs> yeah, that is an HDMI issue. That's not necessarily Windows and Linux, but it just feels like it's just always felt to me like uh, in like the past two years specifically, when whenever I plug screen into like say this laptop here, screen just works, and uh, this laptop has ran both windows and linux and when it when it ran windows screen didn't always just work it it was like a 90 percent of the time thing so it did work but you know it fell into that category of where it's just like hey i'm about to give a presentation at work here so let's plug a screen into monitor it worked last week it worked the day before it worked an hour ago plug screen into monitor it's not working now and we have presentation to be submit uh, presenting now <laughs> interesting and it, it, it ran into that kind of an issue, Never had that kind of an issue. <laughs> so it's like that that t that 10 percent of the time it doesn't work and it is very annoying no here's a, here's here's the thing uh with uh, yes linux is getting much better than windows because here's here's the problem when it uh, when you encounter issues on windows that you don't know how to solve. Guess what? Wherever you go and you post about the problem, you're gonna get AI-like reply. Uh, that that too. And uh, finding like workarounds for Windows is a nightmare. It it is a nightmare because like uh, it's great that Windows used to give you error codes, but they don't even do that for you anymore. They just say, "Oops, this program crashed." Well, you can still look them up, and they tell you to scan Those a QR code. codes were never that that useful, anyway. <laughs> yeah, and the QR code they give you, they just send, it just yeah. sends you to a, ge a generic Microsoft website. But, yeah, it sends you off to a generic Microsoft website, which may or may not give you something useful. And uh, if you see the it doesn't give you anything useful. And if you go to the Microsoft community, you're gonna see the answers to to the error reports. Is like a machine is replying to those. Have you uh, turned off and turned on the computer? Have you, you know, the regular or, generic? Know, I, it, I don't it, think it could be that's the user response of just reinstall Windows. I didn't say it was a machine. I said machine like, like it's, it's repeating the same thing. Yeah, copy it's pasta. The, it's the they they are they are advising them based on a playbook they have. They have to do. Yeah. Whereas uh, uh, when, when you use Linux, there's. Uh, nine out of ten chances you're gonna fall on somebody who's got the knowledge who's gonna hold your hand and guide you uh, through to the solution without any issue without asking for I mean, ex premium accounts so you can get premium support uh, problem with that is you get led onto a terminal and that should never be the first option in my opinion not all the time not well, all the time if you fall the on the right person well, let, let, let's just uh, keep talking about, like, the progress of the Linux desktop here in comparison to Windows. Because Windows right now, uh, they're going through, like, a whole new onboarding system with each version of Windows, right? Like, uh, let's look at the past Windows version releases. We had Windows 7, which was basically just, like, glorify, 
uh, which was basically just like a fan, an extension of Windows Vista, which you know yeah. they just that worked. That actually worked. <laughs> yeah, that actually simplification worked, you know, uh, of Windows at that point, Vista. Hardware caught up with the operating system. Yeah, yeah. Basically, hardware came, caught up with Windows, and then Windows Seven, fantastic release. Everybody loved it. Mm-hmm. Then they came out with Relatively. Windows Eight. Dates. And the, uh, the best Windows. Believe it or not, ever. I actually like. Uh, believe too. it or not, I actually liked Windows Eight. Me too. Uh, like, actually liked it. I I saw the vision yeah. that they were going for. I agreed with it. I honestly think that they should have went more into it. Yes. But yes. like everything was touch have. devices. Yeah. Yeah. I honestly think that that's the direction that they should went. Yeah. But yeah. they chose not to, and uh, at the same time, I'm fine with that because you know that's what that's what the old that's what the, the old businessmen decided that they wanted to do. They just wanted to keep the windows look at, looking and operating like windows. So then they come out with windows 10 and uh, windows mm-hmm. 10, windows 10 begins the transition of migrating away from the old control panel to system settings. And it also had the, the new stuff as well. It, it had new stuff. On top of old stuff, you're looking at three different generations of, yes. you know, just settings and properties menus. And yeah. it just looks, it looks terrible. Yep. So yeah. then I boot up like my, at, at, in a similar year, I would boot up like my GNOME 3 desktop. And everything would thematically match. Because, you know, everything was on GTK 3. And yeah. uh, everything was everything was everything communicated through the same UI library of GTK, and it all looked proper, uh-huh. and it all matched, and it was all explained fairly well. Or and I could say the same thing about KDE, uh, like KDE mm. Plasma. I mean, yes, system settings is a mess. It still is a mess. Giant mess. But mm-hmm. the option is most likely there. It's most likely there, and that search bar actually works. <laughs> yeah, but as Big Pod will most ultimately put it, you wouldn't have needed a search bar if their settings were organized. <laughs> well, organized. Yes. I mean, they're working on it. Plasma 6 is actually a vast improvement on it. <laughs> yes, but to, 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 to comment on that, yes. Uh, with with the existence of GNOME and KDE, but more GNOME than KDE because GNOME are the people who uh, is the DE that is targeting yeah. ease of use more than anybody else. Yes, and that's why a lot of distributions today adopt GNOME first. And I mean, there's with, some historical reasons too. Also, but. Its simplicity is also another big reason. That's why, yes, I do agree with the whole article that, yes, you have the simplicity of GNOME and the availability of people in the Linux community, with the exception of the elitists and the uh, holier-than-thou people in the community and toxic people in the community, because guess what? In Every on every for every OS, every OS has its own toxic community. Not nobody's safe. So, excluding the toxic part of the Linux community, you're gonna find a lot of helpful people who are going to answer you right there and then without asking you, uh, uh, without having paywall, uh, without having to paywall everything. So it's all free. It's all open source. You go on. Well, like DT said, be careful which uh, community, which uh, online servers you go to. But once you find the right one, you're going to get all the help you need. No headaches, no nothing. And most probably, not always, but most probably, you're going to get your issue solved. So you got that aspect. That's very an, a very important part of the reason why Linux is being... Uh, is being sought uh, after coming from Windows because Windows has become so frustrating to use and you got no one to actually provide you help. If you find help on Windows, it's most probably coming from 
questionable communities or are you they just create questions what or are you just reinstalling windows or yeah oh. and then uh can i talk about printers yeah go ahead printers are horrible I mean, everywhere when a printer i mean they're horrible everywhere but when they actually work on linux they work they, they i honestly think that that is the printing experience that everybody should have funny you should bring up printers you just, you plug it in or you turn it on and it just works. Funny you should bring and up... And it's automatically yeah. detected. The only thing you have to do on, on your Linux system is is if you have multiple printers, you just have to basically just tell which one's the default. Yeah. Well, but... my experience with printers isn't that great. Oh, Big Pod, you're always the odd one out. But... Yeah. Now, I understand that printers work on Microsoft Windows too. Not but as why, well. But why the fuck do I need to install a driver for a printer? Wait, no, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. I can stop you right there because on Linux you need to install drivers as well. In a lot of not cases. Not always. Not in always. a lot of cases, uh, there are generic printers. Yes. The same so, on Windows, there's so, no such thing. On Windows, and, there's and, no such thing. Windows, and, you know, the, uh, for the cup stack is it. moving to like yeah. supporting. I can explain why yeah, there, Windows there's requires a whole drivers. protocol for uh, printers. There's a play. Yeah. Go ahead, Big Pop. Reason Windows requires drivers is because unlike Linux kernel, it's very much a bare kernel. It means only the few essential things it actually needs for a computer to run will be inside the kernel. Then the drivers are loaded in user space. That's the main difference between linux kernel and a windows kernel for, for a driver side and that's why you need drivers for basically to install drivers for basically anything as far as i understand and i know that is that drivers are completely separate from kernel kernel just has few basic drivers that are necessary for system to run yeah for example, but that's... basic video driver microcode and stuff like that yeah, but that's not the only issue on Windows. On Windows, when you install said drivers, number one, they come bloated with ads. That's one thing. Please buy our ink from here. Please do this. Please do that. Please register. Please whatever. Uh, nag-tastic uh, ads. And they don't always work. On Linux... When you install the correct drivers and you set up your cup service correctly, they will forever work. They will not bat an eye. Uh, I've had so many problems with printers, whether it be on Windows or Linux. And Well, in my experience, uh, because that's the reason why I said it's funny that you mentioned uh, printers. One of the, one, one of the users uh, on my old server when I asked him, why do you like Zero Linux so much? Which is, by the way, dead. But one, of, he said, because all my print, I have uh, six different mo printer models. They all work out of the box on your on your distro. And all I did was install generic cups and the HP drivers, and that was it. Yeah. But and I Pumatic understand, drivers. I course. understand that this is a very temporary issue because uh, there there's a whole printer protocol specification for, like, true driverless printing where it's coming all... on snaps uh not as a not snap sna no, no no it's a protocol for printers themselves yeah oh so it's a proper protocol and basically it would just work just like a network printer where basically when you print to a pr network printer you're not necessarily like t having a driver talk to the printer you're just sending a file to the printer and the printer just figures yeah. out how to print it by itself that a network Which, printing is the that, only printing that is the experience. future we're heading towards Network Hopefully. printing is the only printing experience that has been working for me, whether it be on Windows or Linux. And even that is very shaky at best. So the only experience I can say works every time when it comes to printers is Android. Wait, what? Yeah. That's so weird. Hearing Android, yeah. for me, it's iOS. All I have I've to do never is actually tried to print from my phone. Install the right uh, pl uh, plugin for printing and I didn't, punch I didn't in need, the IP. I, I didn't need to install anything. I just open my phone. It sees the print. When I say print, it sees my printer and I print. I don't need to install anything on iOS. 
Well, I have to do it on, on Android <laughs> for my printer for HP. Or actually install it, print plugin, and that's it. And then I can select uh, HP printer, type in the IP, and printer's there. So, and so basically what, what, what we ju we're, we're saying right now is printing is better from phones than it is on com from computers? Yes. I want to know because I've never done it. I've done it so many times. Yeah. But, but I don't. I haven't owned a uh, owned a printer in the since twenty twelve. So. I still need one, so I still own it. I I need printers, but instead of do having to go through everything, I just go to the library and it they do it for me for free because uh, their family. It cost me a nickel. But anyways, guys, uh, it was great talking to you guys again. Uh, if you would like to uh, comment on like our our topics here, or, or you know, just like tell us that we're all wrong, just send us an email to contact at tuckspace .com. That will forward the email to all of us, and then we may or may not respond in kind. Uh, but don't be don't be afraid to do that. Uh, in the meantime, if you want to follow us, uh, we post each and every single episode on YouTube. Or, you know, uh, we have the RSS link, too. And uh, you can just download us using your favorite podcast client because, you know, that's how podcasts are supposed to function. And, yeah. of course, YouTube releases after the RSS feed. So if you want to get our contact uh, content as soon as possible, subscribe to us on the RSS. That's that's the one way we actually <laughs> want, you to, want you to pay attention to the show. Because, you know, that is a free and open source stack. And as we touched in in a previous episode, it's fully self-hosted. 100%. Yep. And, you know, there's just something nice about just, like, not having to watch a thing on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> and, and uh, of course, we're all, each of us, we have our own YouTube channels. Uh, we may or may not be posting content. I know Steve has been posting a lot more content than, than uh, either myself or Big Pod lately. Uh, I'm... I've actually got some videos recorded. I just need to go through like the editing process on them. And then Big Pod, I'm sure Same. you've got something in the bruise. Yeah. And uh, but we're also available on uh, Mastodon as well. <laughs> so uh, you give us a give give us a follow through your Fed through your uh, Fediverse uh, services. And you know, I'm I'm certain that uh, if if you're an experienced Fediverse user, you can figure out how to do that. Or you know, you can just watch it uh, watch us from. Uh, anywhere uh, in the meantime guys we'll see you next week take care goodbye